and moment of silence for the sick, handicapped, departed, and military personnel of this community. Thank you. Uh, before we get to the visitors, um, on Saturday, uh, February 9th, Council held an executive session to discuss a number of personnel matters and to obtain legal, uh, legal advice regarding those matters. And we will call our first visitor up, uh, Mary White. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll call. <laughs> Hi, uh, Uh, 
I am here because I, I happen to know I Nino, mean, we are neighbors. I've lived in Bridgeville for seven years. And I am here to represent my company by the name of Western and Southern Life. And um, we are in the process of doing a big hire, and we are in Pittsburgh off of Campbell's Run Road. And the opportunity is wonderful because our company's been around 130 years. We're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio. We have AM Best uh, A plus ratings. Uh, we just purchased Gerber Life for quite a few billion dollars, so we're very financially strong. And um, we have, I think, a great value proposition for people who want to get into the business. We're a very diversified financial services organization, so we do insurance and mutual funds, investments, and all of that kind of thing. We started a new program this year where we are bringing on people that really want to make a career uh, in, in this field. <coughs> And we have extensive training for them to do that. We provide a base salary. We also um, provide commissions, but they do have a base, and we just take them through training for the first year. So anybody that you know in the community, because you're leaders in the community, um, we'd love to have you pass out a brochure or give them my information. And uh, we'd love to actually interview them and have them come in and kind of kick the tires, as they say. So I have some information I can leave with you. My card is on there. And that kind of describes the opportunity. Um, and, uh, and my card is there for anyone who would like to know any more about us. Do you want me to pass these out or just leave them somewhere? I'm going to leave them here at the front and we'll grab them. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. There's plenty here. And extra pens for those who don't like them. <laughs> A lot of extra pens. I have, extra pens. I have 16, um, so I'll leave the others here as well. But we're looking for you to hopefully get us connected with people in the community and then we kind of take it from there. But I think we have a good value proposition, a lot to offer somebody who's interested in a new career. And it could be someone retired. In fact, we just hired someone 81 years old. So there you go. Okay? Thank you very much. I think we need Good evening. Uh, I'm here again as part of the Bridgeville Greater Area Alliance Club. Um, January borough meeting, we were, Dan Huff and I were here. Um, we kind of gave an update on some of the flood relief stuff that the Bridgeville Alliance has done. Uh, we mentioned the possibility of uh, you know, working on a grant for a community disaster planning. We left for some information. Um, since then, on January 8th, Dan Huff and I, Dan was here at the last, last meeting. Uh, met with Chief King and Chief Chilio to discuss um, disaster, community disaster planning with the hope of improving community disaster communication response and relief. Um, right now, um, it's all about contacting stakeholders, um, community organization resources, that type of thing. I'm currently working on some of that with the chiefs um, and keeping Lori involved in what's going on. So she's involved, she knows what's going on. Thank you, Lori. Um, so the Lions and the Chiefs will get together again in the not too distant future after they've got somewhat of a database to put together with them. Um, but that's kind of what the Bridgeville's Radio Area Alliance is working on right now, along with some of the other uh, great things that we do for fundraisers. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to contact me, um, my information is on page 11 of the Bridgeville. Um, Newsletter that just came out. Thank you very much. Uh, phone number, email stuff. So. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Bob Fryer, please. Right. I'd like to talk about uh, that, that left turn lane, but later. Uh, more importantly, I'd like to uh, uh, just mention what we all know that this is a Review of summary. Uh, the people in Bridgeville are paying taxes higher than they should be paying for the modest uh, yearly income they have. We all know that. And uh, my impression is the reason that that's a condition is because many, many years ago, our uh, very thriving business district sort of uh, faded away because of the traffic congestion, failure to have visible parking. 
we're competing with some of the new uh, uh, businesses that have been put in that area for the past three or four years. But at any rate, uh, I wanted to uh, mention, uh, incidentally, I have small uh, drawings of all, most of the things I want to show you tonight. I have them in packets so I can look at them I just wanted to show, again, you and everybody in the area. This, these are the... Bob, you mean anything new? This is all new. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's not. Well, why don't you get on the continue and you shake this mm -hmm. uh, these, these are the eight roads that lead to bridge altitude. And because Richard was here 100 years before anybody else, it's essential, it was essential that our officials didn't decide to uh, uh, to not do anything about the traffic congestion. Uh, the other thing I wanted you to know, I don't think you're aware of this, this is another picture of I-79 Washington Pike. 75% uh, of the potential consumer owners live to the east of Washington Pike. Okay? And essentially what's been happening, happened, happening for decades, people are people in our men. Well, I, I need more time. You know, this is something we've all seen before. Well, I gave you, I, I've been very generous in the past, and please try it out. Uh, you placed no time with so many of you also have to I don't know, Bob. Actually, in fact, you had time with that. I have time with that. Just maybe, maybe that's true. But you have, you have the honor to place a limit on anybody else that's ever spoken. So that means you're discriminating against me. Bob, I have no. I do not discriminate against you. Well, we'll, we'll see. And, and, and I, I have evidence. Continue. I, I have evidence in the case that I did. You did. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, let me mention this. Let me mention this to you. This is, uh, this is essentially, excuse me, Virgil's problem. Four lane, four lane, a two lane in between. We all know that. seen that before. I agree with that. 15 seconds. You probably, you probably, you probably drive it. All the time. What I wanted to show you is how many of you on the council have seen the comprehensive plan of the two one street couple that's been proposed beginning in 1969? I was in high school. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you how many of you have seen this part of Bridge's comprehensive plan as the solution to the traffic congestion problem that's killed us? I mean, do you have meetings where you discuss? Uh, back in the 90s, yeah, uh, I'm talking about recently. Have, do, you, do you ever discuss finally uh, creating a total solution to Bridgeville's uh, major traffic congestion problem? But at any rate, what I wanted to show you, this is it. And I'll leave it here for you to look at. For those of you, it, it involves, excuse me, uh, most of it involves extending Shady Avenue 220 yards making a three-lane south lane, making Washington Avenue a three-lane road going north. And that was, and plus the fact, since, you're, since Washington Pike is the major regional secondary road in the area, along with Fire Hill Road, that was solving problems. Thank you, so, I appreciate the, that. The one of the, no. I want to mention why the flood thing is so We've seen this too, Bob. Uh, this is the so this is a comprehensive plan. Okay, I'll leave it here for you guys to look at. But I want you to know this is the the two one one way street system would work profoundly in Bridgeville more than any other place that's been tried. Shady Avenue is only a half a block away from uh, Washington Avenue and creating for people, despite the fact that they paved over their street for ten years before they figured out the mistake. On, on, in Carnegie, there's no place to loop around. If you were to build this two-way couple just by extending uh, Shady Avenue to 220 yards, you would, you would build, it would create a circuit. It would, you know, you'd make it very easy. We understand, Bob. Uh, you've, you've presented this multiple times. That, we've seen fine. it. We know we have copies of it at home. That's fine. We all do. So I thank you very much. I just yeah. wanted to say one last sentence. Yes, please. The importance of your getting the money in the federal state and county to, uh, to build such a system depends on you having uh, part of the solution to the flooding problem involve eliminating the traffic.
congestion problem going from the east to the west to the tank. Right? So I'll give you this thing. Uh, uh, Tim Knapp, please. <coughs> Yeah, I know you guys are uh, considering planning uh, commission appointments among a couple of others. Um, I just wanted to show up tonight and put my support and recommendation behind Larry Lennon as one of those people. I'm not even sure if this is necessary if you got more than two, but um, you guys certainly know the things that we're continuing to tackle with flood, water control, and the Baldwin Street plan, and all the stuff that we have going on. Uh, I think most of you guys probably know Larry. Larry served on the Planning Commission years ago. Good heart for the community. Um, and by trade, he's got a very successful, uh, his own engineering practice, civil engineering, a big piece of which that they deal with is flood control and water and wet weather programs. He knows this world. Um, so as a public Planning Commission member, I would strongly recommend we add him. He's willing to serve again. Uh, he has the expertise. We, myself, Nino, Dale, we can ask intelligent questions all day long, but some of the things we just don't know. I think you would add a ton of value to the stuff that we're going to be navigating over the next couple of years. So uh, I offer that to you as a recommendation, and I think you would add a, an absolute um, wealth of knowledge to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Calvary, please. Hi, guys. Hi, Jeff. Hi, So I just had... Um, a couple of questions on procedures. So the Planning Commission has brought a proposal to the original council. What is the procedure after the proposal arrives to you? So we we either adopt it or you know basically approve it, um, which we have not. Uh, or we can say, excuse me, don't like it, send it back. We want to see other, see different ideas. So when people put their voices up here about an opinion or a proposal that comes to you, is, do you consider those? Is, I don't know what the council does. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. In some cases. Most of the time. So, you know, I, I agree a lot with uh, Mr. Bob Fryer and what he has to say. And I really agree on the end of Baldwin Street having the potential to build more buildings and incomes than to build a collecting pond of water against Fire Hill Road. Um, and I really disagree with the pylon theory coming from the proposal on Baldwin Street, a okay, village. We have, not, we have not approved any plan. I so, understand. I mean, but you just said that you do take opinions. We do. And, and, but I want you, when, when people will come and say, say, hey, you're putting this plan that's out there, agreeing again, you're like, I don't like pilots. But we don't, a lot of us don't want to meet them. You know? We don't know that. You're not, you're not chatting to the public. Is, do, do you, is there a, a kind of point when you discuss what the council's leaning towards to the public? Or no, I don't know the procedures. It's, it's after we get a chance to review it, and we have a discussion, and we'll be here, and we'll bring that to the council in a meeting like this, and everybody will uh, view their opinions and go from and make a decision. So, um, so then I was okay to state my opinion because again, yeah. you said it's okay to state your opinion. And then, does it, at any point does it come to the public? I mean, it goes to plan, you, you, I mean, the planning commission has their meetings where they go and discuss it. That's a place where you would go and at the, In planning, the, at the planning stages and and express your opinions to the planning commission while they're having their meetings. Are you required to have a public meeting advertised in the newspaper beforehand? So there should be two way no, 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 no. Well, there should be. I understand. I the the commission if I might. has their if, uh, monthly meeting, so I understand it doesn't get advertised because it's a monthly public meeting. 
It depends upon the nature of what the thing is you offer us. Mm -hmm. If it's a project, it may be a, they all happen in a public meeting. You, you don't need a special meeting unless or a special advertisement unless it's, you know, usually zoning or something specific. But for a project, it's an ongoing discussion until, less than until they decide to <coughs> authorize to move forward or not. So the authorization comes. Is there a, a public discussion before that? That'll be believed uh, here we'll at this on, meeting. Yeah. I think that just needed to be said because maybe the public is hinging on what do they do? What do they do? And don't know the procedures like myself. So I kind of wanted to put that out there. What are the procedures? I admire all of you being up there. I don't want to be in your shoes. So having said that. Um, okay, I brought this up a couple of years ago. 18 wheelers coming through Bridgeville. I'm going to bring it up again. Coming down Bank Street. I mean, isn't there a way that PennDOT can restrict on their um, GPSs for trucks to go around? I've seen them stuck on Bank Street too many times now. Is there a way that PennDOT has I mean, it's anything? A state, it's a state road. It's a state route. So we can't control it. Um, I mean, is it cheap? Is there limits on? No, I've, I've never had a, in 20 years a truck stuck on Bank Street. I'm not sure where you'd be referring to that. It happens on Chartier Street. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally on Chartier. Yeah, this truck wasn't down. stuck, but he had to inch his way through. I mean, I have it on my phone video. Right. I mean, I see the Mayflower moving trucks going up Bank Street all the time, the tractor trailers. I don't but, know. But, you know, it's, it's so easy to, if, if, if PennDOT has a, 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 something in its system that they can get off 79, they can go 519, down Boyce Road, and come back into Navy, whatever they have to do, they can go up, call your exit, come down uh, 50 to Bridgeville, take Fire Hill Road, and take that out to 19 Road. And that avoids that circle in Bridgeville. So I just thought if PennDOT had anything, perhaps we should start talking to them about it. Uh, okay, thank you guys. Thanks, Liz. regular meeting. Uh, conditional use application, 131 Washington Avenue. Uh, conditional use application submitted by the owner of the property, uh, Thomas King Jr. on behalf of the tenants. Uh, Pittsburgh Pets Home LLC was submitted to the Planning Commission for uh, property located at 131 Washington Avenue. The applicant proposes to utilize the property for the establishment of a pet crematorium. The plan is subject to requirements in section 903-29 of the zoning ordinance, which also reference requirements in section 1001 performance standards. The plan was reviewed for compiling compil 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 various standards by engineer sites and approved by the Planning Commission for consideration of council. The Planning Commission's recommendation of approval of the plan by council includes a contingency of landscaping upgrades and lighting upgrades to a gooseneck style in order to create a cohesive facade with current business in the area. Uh, public hearing was held on February 11th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. to receive citizens' comments. I so move. Uh, motion by Nino. Second. Second by Joe Glossmo. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Yes, sir. Oh, I Motion of the Borough Council regarding the minutes of January 14, 2019, regular meeting estimate. Uh, Bruce? Second. Bill Henderson, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Ordinance number 1001, uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding ordinance number 1001, an ordinance amending the Bridgeville Borough Code of Ordinance, Chapter 15, Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Part 2, Travel Regulations. Section 15-211.1. Uh, stop intersection. Uh, stop intersections established specifically to create a stop intersection for vehicles traveling in easterly and westerly directions along Winfield Street, where Winfield Street intersects intersects with Lafayette. Uh, 90 degree, 90, a 90-day traffic study was conducted to review the impact of the stop signs uh, on the traffic mm -hmm. in that area. The ordinance has been duly advertised. So it was moved. 
Uh, first by Bill Henderson, second by uh, Ms. Gallagher. All those in favor? Yeah. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number four, 2018 Sanitary Soar Point Repair Project. Uh, motion of the Borough of Thompson regarding the middle of current estimate number four, 2018 Sanitary Soar Project. Point repair project to the end of uh, construction in the amount of $32,080.93 for work completed to date. Uh, estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. That's uh, it. Bruce and uh, Galgucci and Nina Patricelli. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. 2019 pavement maintenance, pavement maintenance project. Uh, motion to the borough council. Authorizing engineer sites to, to prepare specifications and manager columns to advertise the same for the 2019 pavement maintenance project. Engineer sites and manager columns will review the streets of the <coughs> with the Public Works Committee prior to the advertising of the project. So, uh, Dino and uh, Joe Fossil. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, board appointments. A motion of uh, borough council regarding the appointment to the planning commission for a four year term uh, to the first Monday in January uh, 2023. We have a nomination of the planning commission. I'll nominate Larry Lennon. I uh, say. Larry Lennon nominated by Joe uh, Bucci and second by Nina. Um, all those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. A motion to the Borough of Council regarding the appointment of the Planning Commission for a four year term to the first Monday in January 23rd. We have an appointment for a second. A motion for Justine Simmerwoman. Uh, a motion by PJ uh, e. Bott or Schneider. <laughs> Sorry. <It's okay. laughs> And uh, second by Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding uh, appointment of the Zoning Hearing Board for a two year term to the first Monday in January 2021. So moved. You have a second. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so John Rattani is saying report. Okay. Uh, Joe Klossman, who seconded? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to the Borough Council regarding the appointment of the, to the Civil Service Commission for a three year term to the first Monday in January 2022. Mike, can I make a recommendation? We table this. I, we do have an applicant, we have not met the person. Sure. We'd like to interview that person at a public safety meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Is there a motion to the table? I'll make a motion. Uh, Bruce Second. and Joe Plasma, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? It is. Thank you. Uh, bill list. Motion of the Borough Council regarding the February 2019 bill list. I'll move. Uh, Joe Ricci and Bruce Gallagher. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, payroll. Motion of the Borough Council approving the payrolls of February 15, 22, and March 1 and 8, 2019. So moved. Uh, Bruce, Bruce Gallagher. Second. And Nina Patricelli. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, monthly reports. Motion to accept and pay any commissions due. The January 2019 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Uh, Joe Verducci. Sir. And uh, Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Motion to accept the de December 2018 financial report. I'll move. Uh, Joe Verducci. Second. And Nina Picelli, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept. Uh, January 2019 police report. <coughs> so moved. Second. Bill Anderson and Joe Klossman, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Motion to accept the January 2019 zoning report. So moved. Uh, Bill Anderson. 
Second. And Virginia Schneider. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, real estate tax return. Um, motion borough council regarding the following real estate tax refund due to changes in the assessments as requested by the real estate tax collector. Uh, um, you can include it as one motion. All three of them? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, as stated. Seems a little breath. There you go. Good moment. Uh, Bruce Calarducci? I'll second. And Joe Ritchie. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Administration. I don't have any news at the time, sir. All right. Uh, finance, Joe? Uh, finance. Uh, the auditors have uh, finished the 2018 audit. Uh, it's complete and uh, they're preparing their final report where he said that it went very well. Um, the big expenses so far in the year obviously is the great expense of road salt. Uh, beginning of the year expenses that we normally have, former police expenses and, and engineering expenses. Uh, we did have to spend some money on the flood mitigation uh, type uh, uh, things that we're working on now. So it's pretty much all the true expenses that we had to deal with uh, in the last month. Uh, that's all I have to do. Thanks. Uh, parks and Recreation. Uh, not much of a it's court, close. really. It's closed. Uh, snowy, <laughs> weather stinks and everything. Uh, sort of looking to the future, like this coming season, summer, and whatnot. The Glock and Run Park is really a big state of the Most of this is in Maury's Manager's report, but we put in a uh, request for a grant from the state, and supposedly we lost the paperwork. And we advised enough that uh, the uh, commission that developed WCF is basically out of business, from what I understand. Yeah. So, where that's going, I don't know. Plus, what damage up there. I don't know if we'll be able to do anything to the park this year or not. Uh, Chartiers Park. We were working on a comprehensive plan for that. The flooding, the finances are just not there to do the work. The park needs some work. I mean, the parking lot's down there, atrocious. Some other things we would like to do down there, but we, now we just don't have the money, so we're working on getting another grant for that, but that's probably down the road somewhere, hopefully. Uh, and we'll have a meeting in the near future with our parks committee. Some small things we can do in the parks won't cost too much money. Like dressing up the parking lots a little bit, especially in uh, the pavilions and preparing some of the playground equipment. That stuff's in good shape down there, but it's been down there pushing for many years. It's been a lot. So, it's due to the vandalism and whatnot down there. I mean, the park's still charged here, especially the beautiful park. I mean, we get a lot of use out of it, but it needs some help. So that's where we're going. Hopefully, we'll be able to do something with it, especially the parking lot. I don't know. Maybe it's 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 get Lane to pay the force for free or something like that would be great. Talk to your friend in the mall. Maybe you can help us out. That's all I have. All right. Thanks, Joe. Uh, public safety building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have nothing to add, Michael, to for the chief report. No, I mean, man, like... Oh, what was that? Nina, all the works. Well, we will move it snow right now, Mr. Uh, Chairman. <laughs> at, at this time, I mean, it's always good. Uh, take care of the weather, uh, the snow, and the ice, and potholes. So, uh, we will be doing a good job. I see. Other than that, mm -hmm. they, with that, there always comes some repair with the equipment, of course, so, and that's a big Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor. From the Collier Township Police Department, Mayor Copeland, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Chief Chad King for his assistance with a threat at the Chartiers Valley High Middle School mm -hmm. on January 23rd. He is a credit to the Bridgeville Police Department. He was among 10 agencies that assisted at his leadership was instrumental in providing an organized, multi-agency response to the threat. 
It is a testament to our partnership with your agency and our other local law enforcement partners that their prompt and professional response allow us to clear the threat effectively and efficiently. If we can be of assistance in the future, please do not hesitate to ask, as Collier Township is indebted to your police department for the service that they provided, the officers of the Collier Township Police Department, students of the Chartiers Valley School District, and citizens of Collier Township, signed by Craig Campbell, Chief of the Police Department of Collier Township. <laughs> As everyone knows from television, this is Black History Month. I'm grateful to all of you who took the time to attend the service at Solid Rock in honor of Martin Luther King. But we have a resident. George Barber is 92 years old, has been a resident of Bridgewell since 1962, and was a nationally known award-winning journalist with KDKA and the Pittsburgh Courier, as well as an active citizen in Bridgeville. He was the first African-American hired as a broadcast journalist in the Pittsburgh market, where he was hired in 1964 by KDKA and was a tireless advocate for using his broadcast journalism platform to fight discrimination whenever and wherever he found it before retiring. A series of articles authored by Mr. Barber led to the development of a diversity and hiring practice program for both the city of Pittsburgh and Allegheny County. He also did a series of articles on school inequality that was read by Thurgood Marshall and attached to a supplemental briefs, brief sent to the Supreme Court in the 1954 case of Brown versus the Board of Education. That case led to desegregation in the public school system in America. In addition, Mr. Barber made contributions in Bridgeville. Among them, he was the volunteer chair of the advisory committee and the communications persons for the development of Bridgeville's recycling program. He was a member of First Baptist Church, long-term deacon, and president of Bridgeville Civic League for 19 years. He and his wife, Gloria Jean Cross Farber, have been married for 64 years. Their three children graduated from Sharp Tears Valley, Edward, Jacqueline, and the late Carolyn. They were products of our Sharp Tears Valley great school system. We greatly appreciate the contributions of Mr. Barber and his family to Bridgeville. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, police Chief. Okay. Thanks, Council Presidents. Uh, just one item, I think around the Beginning of March, we'll be doing the multi-jurisdictional food drive again, which we started last year. The neighboring jurisdictions of South Fayette, Collier Township, Heidelberg, and Scott Township will be participating in that also. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe when we we did the drive last year, uh, it ended up being the largest food donation ever to Bethany's Food Bank at, at Bethany mm -hmm. Presbyterian Church. So we hope to equal that again this year. We'll advertise it on Facebook as the time gets closer. They actually ran out of room. Yes. <laughs> yes. They made room. Yes, they did. That's all I have. Thanks, Chief. So, sir, thank you. I have nothing to do with uh, this. Your side of Thank you, Mr. Correct. So, a couple of you. Um, just want to give an update since I turned my engineer's report. Our survey crews have completed the existing conditions survey at the end of January for our proposed ramp and for cleaning the bridge from the, the debris from the bridge of Power Hill Road. And it was also completed the field work for the McLaughlin Run ball field so we can uh, determine how much airport we can do to lower the field and build our trash rack. Once we do that, we'll make applications to the uh, DEP and the County Conservation District for the necessary permit to proceed with that work. Okay. The other thing is our uh, pre-construction meeting on Thursday with the, uh, the contractor who's going to make the uh, restroom renovations to the Chartier's Park restrooms. Uh, in his review of the uh, documentation and getting his permit from the uh, the county, uh, we have not planned on making it. There's never been hot water down there. And one of the things is that the Allegheny County Plumbing Department is requiring us to have hot water down there. So the, the best way to do that is to have an uh, instantaneous hot water heater 
that's operating electricity. So he's given me a price of $4,274 to do the electrical work and the installation of the uh, on-demand hot water heater that would service both the men's and the women's rooms. So that's you know, your consideration for that if you'd like to proceed with that work. Uh, is it mandatory or? It's the mandatory by the state. Now, now the Italian health department requires that hot water for the So, I mean, I'll make that motion. It's time that we have to do it. Right. Yeah. 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 I think I think generally what we do is we look at the condition of it. I mean we have a, a street inventory that we've been looking at over the years and we from a rating system we did about five years ago, we keep that updated and we go back and look at that and see what's next in succession for paying. There may be something that maybe needs to be moved up because of maybe some utility work that's occurring. Maybe we'll, we'll partner with a utility company and do a road. But uh, if you have something you'd like to suggest, we'd be more than willing to take a look at it. Okay. Okay. So residents can do that? You can call sure. them? Okay. Sure. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Uh, Fire Chief. Okay. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, I gave you guys all the reports, got you caught up for last year, and then the new one for this year, which we went to emergency reporting. Uh, one thing nice about that is it automatically goes right into the fire commission's office. We don't have to send nothing. It goes directly into him. The last thing I have is that time of year again. So it's starting next month, fish fry. Mm -hmm. The community gathering, as we always call it. Yeah, we have three of them this year because we have a wedding at one of them, so we had to give up our fish fry. It's actually a wedding for one of our members, too. So. He included a lot of fish fry. Do you have any fish in his way? I don't know. I didn't ask him that. I should have. Right. Holy cow. All right. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Uh, I do have a couple things tonight. Um, just to let everybody know that our subscription drive is soon to hit everybody's mailboxes. So if everybody could uh, help us out, subscribe. And when insurance companies are covering the ambulance bills, the subscription really helps us cover you. And if you should need us, hopefully you don't. But if you do, um, the CPR initiative we talked about, I don't know if it's the last meeting that I was here at. Um, we're working to finalize that. Um, my lead on that kind of went to go be a physician assistant, so we're trying to backfill that. Um, but we should hopefully soon have the public push to do the hands on CPR and get that out of the community, like I had mentioned. Um, another item in Southbridge was very busy in 2018. We gave you the statistics. Um, we were up 500 calls from 2017. And, uh, <clears throat> this came up many years ago, but we you know, unfortunately it's coming up again. There are rumors of Southbridge going bankrupt. Um, those are absolutely not true. So if you hear that, um, please kind of kibosh that from the top that we are financially stable and uh, aren't going anywhere. So we can start with um, <clears throat> can't buy it. Yeah. Um, oh, in, in reference to the CPR initiative, um, we're going to do two things. Uh, there's two things happening with that. One is uh, Cecil Township actually has line item budgeted some help for us. So every year they're going to be kind of contributing to us to kind of push this public, um, you know, give us a little funds to generate some interest and uh, equipment to do that project. And also on Thursday, April 11th, if you like golfing, um, we're going to do uh, a uh, top golf tournament. We're going to do a fundraiser out there. So. <coughs> Get off in the afternoons from work. If you want to join us for some golf? Um, we'll have flyers out soon and see what's the date then? Uh, Thursday, April 11th, from noonish one to 5 p.m. And no comments from the banker. Okay. 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 
That's all I got. Thank you. Hey, Dan, tell everybody how many calls you do here. 5,000. 5,000. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Regional Historical Thank Society. Thank you. Again, very quickly, like, uh, going from golf thing to tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the Old Railroad Station, the Old Library, is the second Tuesday done by John Wyler. And um, we're getting near the end of this series. This is the 1958 and 1959 class of Richard High School. In a couple weeks from now, or a month from now, it's going to be the 1960 year, which is one of the best year books I have ever seen in my life. But tomorrow night at 7, please come if you're interested in First Row High School, 1958 to 59. More interesting to me is one of the best speakers I have ever heard. He is a retired pastor. He loves history, particularly military, war histories. And so on Sunday afternoon, February 24th, at 1.30 at the Birchville Volunteer Fire Department, he will be speaking, and it's a long title, but um, I'll be happy to bring program notice is over, put in your mail bins, and I hope to see some of you at that program. He is excellent, believe me. And last but not uh, least, name? we was are back in Barry, who was the name of the speaker? His name? Yes. I didn't bring the paper. Okay. It's either <laughs> Otto <laughs> or Otto. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 This, this last six weeks, I got you. Done again, kind of been corrupted. But very last, but not least, we do have raffle tickets for sale. They are $5 a ticket. Um, on the ticket would be four three digit numbers, so that on March 22nd, turn on. 7 o'clock news and get the number, and if you have the number on your ticket, then you have won two tickets to the, and I hope they're winning by then, the Penguins. And the game itself is Sunday, March 31st at 5 p.m. And we hope that you all will participate in that money raiser, and I thank you very much. Nice to see you back, Mary. Mm -hmm. said, nice to see you back. I'm going to see you all day. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Good. Uh, Virtual Library? Not the Board. Uh, I'll give you anybody from the Department of Authority. Uh, planning Commission? Well, Mr. Uh, Chairman, it's nothing that I mean that we. Uh, Sometimes I get kind of disturbed. But we in this position, we do get disturbed. And at least it's very you know, a good community person. She does a lot of work for them. But most of the things we do with writing commission, uh, listen, it's idea from professional people. And who we have to listen? We have engineer, we have uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We come up with something I don't mind, of course, and we discuss it. But the meeting the are times every month, and we would like to see more cooperation from the from the public and they can dinner with us and they'll see. Uh, sometimes you know we get I get discouraged myself because we put a lot of work into into this government. And then people either ignore it or don't have the time. But we, we don't do things on our own. They, we have a lot of professional people who advise on these things. But I appreciate your comments, though. We should do more advertise, let people know more about it, I understand. But they should come to the meeting as well. We'd like to see you there. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. Uh, manager, This is good with private work work. Anyone has any questions or comments? Um, the residents on Baldwin 
Street to, I sent them down a survey regarding a uh, hazard mitigation grant and uh, the municipality has to apply for it on behalf of the residents. So um, the survey has to be by February 15th and the letters of interest have to be February 28th. So, um, Do you receive any of Two. Two. In, in favor of like wanting to participate? Yes. Okay. Uh, old business, new business. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. Bruce and second that one. Oh, second. Uh, All in favor? All in opposed?